Dennis Jerrigan and Jared Killers Part 5 The Stone of Intimacy with God Connecting with God It is not unusual for someone who is trying to eliminate sin or some other spiritual problems from his or her life to face multiplied fears. Under the best of circumstances, these fears are merely troubling. At worst, it can paralyze us like a toxin, keeping us from moving forward into the future filled with the freedom that God has set out before us. My fellow giant killer, we must understand intimacy with God. Relationship means connection. Relationship requires real intimacy. Intimacy means letting someone see you at your deepest place, the point of who you really are. Intimacy means into, into me see. I allow the Father to see into me, and then He invites me to see into Him. Such a relationship requires trust and is a prerequisite to life. My life must have as its foundation the right belief system. God's truth must be the place where intimacy begins. I am who He says I am. This leads to an exchange of right feelings because I know, I now understand who He says I am. These right feelings, these right feelings lead to right behavior. No longer do I perform to be accepted by Him. I simply believe I am who He says I am and I perform in a righteous manner because that is who I am. When the enemy whispers reminders concerning our past failures, we can either entertain them or we can choose to hear the truth. To listen to the lies of the enemy is to practice intimacy with him. And intimacy with the enemy always leads to our destruction and ultimate, ultimate failure. If we are ever to be giant killers, we must learn to trust God on the most intimate of levels. After all, why should we hide from the one who sees our hidden sins and continues to love us anyway? One of the ways I practice intimacy when the enemy attacks is to cry out to God and ask him to let me hear what he says about, he says about me. I love to hear him remind me that while our certain failure may have been a reality for me at one time, that failure has been forgiven. Something new has come in its place, and who he says I am is who I am. I am not what I have done. And one thing that is very strong for me regarding Dennis Jordan, and he, it's that he talks a lot about identity, who he is, and the father. And in this is something we all have to learn. We all have to sink deep because it's going to this. It's going to set the path of our lives. If you desire freedom. Seek to know God intim intimately. If you desire change, seek to know God intimately. If you need hope or joy or emotional healing, seek to know God intimately. Relationship is everything. It's in this relationship that we are going to be restored to our original purpose. I look inside. One, what do I fear? Two, what hidden things are keeping me from enjoying deeper intimacy with Christ? Chapter 21 When I Can't Hear God Today I was driving down the road after having one of my one of my all too common fits on complaining to God. Here I am, someone who has everything he really needs in life. Health, family, friends, the love of God and more. And yet, all I can see and communicate to God is that the house is falling apart, the finances are not existing, the direction of my life seems to be taking yet another turn. No one understands me, and certainly no one cares. One of the best ways to hear from God when it seems that we haven't been able to hear anything from, here, from Him is to get still. Be still and know He is God. To get quiet, so I knew that I had to quiet my own thoughts, quiet my own emotions, quiet my own will and desire for personal gratification. I wasted years complaining that nobody loved me and that no one understood me. If I had been someone else listening to me, I would have walked the other way whenever I saw me coming. No wonder I didn't have many friends. All I thought about was... all I. Th all I thought about was me and my own needs. 
In a way, the noise of my own complaining attitude, especially after I was set free and began to know better, drowned out the voice of God. Anything I allow to speak in my life with more volume than God's voice keeps me from hearing God as clearly as I should. When I first realized this truth, I became aware that I had allowed the enemy to speak more loudly into my life than God. So, what did I do? I began to go through every area of my life and cut out the noise of anything that robbed me of hearing God's voice. Some things I kept out outside. Some things I kept outside of hearing range for good, such as wrong places and wrong friends. Some things I cut out until I got better. I got a better handle on them, such as too much television or even music. In fact, for 10 years, I did not listen to any music, Christian or secular, so that I could hear God's voice more clearly. What I discovered was a world of peace in which God was more than happy to speak, especially when my focus was on Him and others, when I came to Him in gratitude, regardless of my circumstances. I suggest you, I suggest you ask yourself, in what areas of my life can I turn down the volume? In other words, what can you cut out of your life or cut down or pay less attention to so that you can focus on what God is saying to you? Make all the changes. Make all the changes it takes until God is coming through loud and clear to you. Leaving, learning to be still and listen and listen for Him is key to recognizing our place versus His our desires versus His, our plans versus His. It's not about us, it's about Him, all about Him. I look, I look inside. Why? Am I quick to hear the voice of God or am I slow? 2. What other noises in my life might be drowning out the voice of God? How can I turn them out? 3. When I think about God speaking, what do I imagine He sounds like? Is He angry? Comforting, stern, gracious, firm. Chapter 22. Hearing God speak your name. Recently, I took my ch children camping alongside a nearby ri river. They could not wait to get into the water and swim across the wide expanse. After all, they had heard my stories of time spent on the same river when I was a child and of how much fun my brothers and I had on the other side. I will never forget the first time I was given permission to swim across the river when I was a boy and how liberating it felt to leave the shallows, the sh shallows and head for the fun of the deep. And he tells that one of his children um, had, a tr had a moment of trouble while he was crossing back the river and his father, Dennis during the start to, to say out loud, Son, I'm here, it's okay, just swim, just swim, it's okay, it's okay, come on, follow my voice. And he shows how, how we move smoothly in life and how we can have direction in life if we listen to our father's voice. If we listen to it, we are going to have a successful path, we are going to have a peaceful path. Although the trials will come, we will have the assurance that the one who calls out, calls us out, he is with us. Um, for many years, I attempted to make it across the river of life on my own. Most of the time, because of the currents of my temptations, I was swept into places and situations far too precarious for me to handle alone. In danger of drowning my own sense of failure and worthlessness, I felt too far gone or too much in fear of the giants in my life to even believe that God would desire to help me. But when I was set free from the power of my sin and began to understand how much I had been lied to by the enemy, I began to see God. Namely, I sought Him through prayer and through learning to hear His voice in an intimate manner. What an exciting discovery this new intimacy in a relationship was. It was a revelation for me to understand that God not only loves me, but also calls out to me, to me by name. He has a specific things to tell about who I am, 
who he is and what he has in store for me. He has words for me that provide guidance and comfort at whatever stage of life I may find myself in. His words tells me that as his sheep, I can actually hear the shepherd's voice. I have discovered that if I am paying attention, I can hear him speaking in a variety of ways through words in his book that I have skimmed over many times before, but that now pierce right to my heart. If you want to be a giant killer, you must learn the power of prayer. And prayer, of course, being conversation, being conversation is both talking and listening. God has words just for you, and I wouldn't want you to miss a single one. What I have discovered above all in listening to God over a period of many years is that even though I still must face face times of swimming against the currents of temptation and battling the giants of my tough life, giants of my thought life, I can trust that God is with me. He calls out my name to let me know I am not alone and gives me a place to look for directions as I learn to detect the nuances and whispers of his voice speaking to me. Chapter, uh, and before we go ahead to the next chapter, I remember once, actually 10 years ago, I was in my bedroom, I had arrived from, from church, and I was walking through a very hard moment in my life and I was and I was very overwhelmed by that situation and I was deeply sad I was so sad that I could feel the pain aching inside of my heart and it was so scared I couldn't sleep and I was so shocked inside myself that I couldn't cry as well and I was so 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 overwhelmed with that situation and I remember that I lay down in my bed, but I couldn't sleep because of this. And I heard a friend of mine call calling me, Sam, Sam. And I, I said, oh my goodness, is my friend here? Is I would I used to live on the first floor, so I went down the the stairs. And I went to the door and there wasn't nobody there. And then I realized that it was the Lord calling my name. Until now, that was the only time I he I heard God talking to me in all audibly way. And it was amazing because at that moment when I went down to my bedroom and I lay down and I realized that it was the Lord, I felt such a violent peace. And hey, and I say violent peace because I had never felt a peace like that before. It was over overwhelming the pain I was feeling. And I was I was totally in another realm at that moment. And I just heard that I just him I just heard him calling my name. But it changed everything and it was an experience that that I treasure until today. Chapter 23. Ways of hearing. I begin to understand that he speaks with me more than simple impressions upon my heart or mind. Sometimes I wake up and there is a song in my heart that I need to write down. Who put it there? Sometimes I, I have a spiritual insights, visions, if you will, that I cannot take credit for. Who put them there? Sometimes circumstances happen that either keep me from a wrong decision or lead me to, to some new truth about myself or God. As you can see, God speaks in many varied and creative ways. His voice is more prevalent and, mag and magnificent than we can possibly fathom with our feeble and untrusting minds. But I must trust what he says, that he is speaking and that I can hear, that I can hear him. Once I heard Joyce Meyer saying, believe that you can talk to God and he's going to reply because sometimes when we are praying and we are um, we are talking to God in our moments in our devotional sometimes we have the feeling that we are talking to the walls and that our prayer won't reach heaven 
but we have to believe that we can talk to God and He's going to respond us. He's going to answer us. Um, what a blessed adventure this life becomes when you choose to live it in a relationship, in an in intimate, intimate communion with our God. He has made a way for us to hear and know Him. And in hearing Him, we develop, develop our relationship with Him and lose the fears that would keep us from being complete giant killers. Let us learn to trust what we can hear Him. A look inside. 1. How has God spoken to me? 2. In what ways am I more apt to hear God? That is, in what areas am I more sensitive? 3. How confident am I that I will be able to participate in a complete back and forth conversation with God? And that's it, and be blessed in the practice of the word.